Morning folks, Bay State Yankee here. Uh, this morning the temperature was 47 degrees. I got up, I was actually cold. So I decided that it would be a good day to make our first batch of corn chowder for the season. Uh, you gotta have a cool day. Hot corn chowder just isn't good on a hot humid day. So um, this, this particular recipe comes from my dad. Uh, we tweaked a little bit, uh, but pretty much, you know, it was his idea, and I can remember making it with him in the fall, and um, it just it brings back so many memories that um, <clears throat> I have to make a pot frequently. Everyone likes it. Uh, it goes pretty quick, so I make a lot of it. Uh, some of the quantities you're going to see seem excessive, but once you taste it, you understand why. Uh, it's rich. If you're on a diet, this probably isn't a video for you to watch. Uh, we use a lot of a lot of corn, a lot of corn. We use whole milk, heavy cream, uh, potatoes, onions. What you'll see as we go along, um, it's it's an excellent recipe. Uh, like I said, everyone likes it. So why don't you uh, pull up a chair, get yourself a cup of coffee, and um, take a look. Thanks. Okay, I've got my ingredients out. Um, I think that this is probably the best piece of advice that a new cook could get is to make sure you have everything out and ready for you on the counter. Uh, just so you don't get part way through your recipe and realize you're missing a key ingredient. Um, so anyway, to start with, I'll go right down the line and show you what I have. Uh, and this is not in order of it being added to the pot. This is just general inventory. I've got three cups of frozen corn. Um, any brand, doesn't matter. And you don't have to measure it exact. You can. I always like to overdo it a little bit. Then we go to the cream corn. I've got seven cans on the counter here. Uh, Dad always used three. But we upped it to seven because I want that I want that spoon to stand up in the pot. When you take a scoop of that chowder, there's got to be something in it. So since it's corn, you know that's what we're going with. I've got some black pepper there, some salt. I've got a pint of heavy cream. Um, this this is probably the most important ingredient in this whole chowder. If you want a good chowder, you got to have it. I've got whole milk. Typically, we drink 1% here at this house, but I always get the whole milk just for this recipe. I've got three medium onions, and I'm going to have um, eight cups of diced uh, potatoes. I'm using a russet today. Uh, they are kind of dirty, so I'm going to soak them in the water first. I'm leaving the jackets on. Uh, it adds a little to the flavor. It makes it a little more rustic. Um, and then I've got bacon. And I'm only going to use six slices of this. The bacon that you use does not have to be a premium bacon. You can get the cheapest one with the most fat because it's the fat that you're after. The flavor of that, of that bacon fat is going to permeate through all, all this stuff. Um, so this, this is a chance to save a few bucks. Um, in any case, it's all going in this pot. This is a 10 quart pot. Um, we'll practically fill it when we're done. And, uh, it seems like a lot, but like I said, it goes fast. You know, people are taking two, three cups of it and, you know, it goes down. So let's get started and I'll get the potatoes working and, and chop the onions and then, uh, We'll move along. Thanks. I don't know if you can see this. Um, this is kind of what we're looking for. Pieces about that size. Um, and I want eight cups of these. 
And again, it's, it's with the corn. It's okay if you're a little bit over, you know. It's not like you're baking a bread or something where everything has to be exact. I was undecided what to make today. I didn't know if I wanted to bake something. Uh, and I thought, well, maybe I'll, I'll do this and I'll bake something later on. Uh, I've got some more blueberries in there. And I always think blueberry muffins or a cake or something. But this will satisfy you for several days this week while it's so cool. End of the week, it's supposed to get warm again, so it'll be gone by then. Onions. Whoa. Over the years, we really spent a lot of time on this recipe. Um, and we find that uh, six gives you just the right amount of flavor. You don't want it overpowering, but you want to know it's there. So, that's why we do it. You're certainly welcome to use uh, more or less if you don't care for bacon. You don't have to be precise here with the size. Uh, you're just breaking it down. I've got a 10 quart pot here. We're going to use all of this. Get my uh, bacon in there. I got to brown that really good. Extract a lot of that fat out of there. Once I get the fat out, I'm going to take the bacon out, leave the fat in, I'll take the bacon out and drain those pieces and I'll put my onion in and cook that down in the bacon fat. We need a little helper to move this around. bacon lovers this the smell here is just out of this world I'm gonna get a, a bowl ready for that bacon I'm taking a an empty bowl and I'm lining it with paper towel so when I get my bacon in there it will drain off that excess, any excess uh, fat. 
you don't want too much fat in here. You want the flavor, but you don't want a layer of grease floating on the top. So that's kind of why we do it. Dad used to put one piece of bacon in there. Uh, we can't be stingy here. A little too hot there. Now there'll be some residue on the bottom of the pot, some bacon residue, and that's good. That's you want that because later that will release into the chowder, uh, and that's your flavor. Uh, Coffee. If you stay caffeinated, you could do more. All right. Okay, I've been cooking the bacon for a little while. Uh, I'll be honest with you, we had gotten the lean, and I had to add a little bit of butter with it, uh, just to be sure that I could uh, finish cooking it and not burn it. I'm taking that bacon out, putting it in the bowl that I lined right here. much fat in there as I can. There we go. I may have to add that butter in there. Now I'm going to dump all my onions in. Um, I want to fry them up. Like I said, this is one time where you really want lousy bacon. Um, fatty. Fatty bacon. So I'm throwing a little bit more butter in there. This is just regular salted butter. Uh, I don't like to do margarine. It's not, it's not like real food. I'm not sure what it is, but uh, I don't like it. Nobody ever died from eating butter. They might have gotten fat, but they didn't die. Put this down, turn the heat up so it really does cook. I need a bowl for the onions to drain it. Kind of overdoing it there, but. We got some more paper towel. Put that in there. And that'll take away any of the extra grease. More coffee. Gotta stay caffeinated. Can't be falling asleep on a day like today. You're gonna miss everything. Those are starting to brown up now. And the skin on the bottom of the pan is coming off. So that's all bacon. That's going to add little, little flecks in there. Almost like a roux. Cook those down a little bit more. I don't want I don't want anything chunky. A little more heat. 
We got this new stove. Um, I would prefer working on a, uh, not a gas, but an electric with a coil. This one's a bit of a challenge. When you change the temperature, uh, it goes up, it warms up quick, but it cools down slow. So, if your recipe calls for the pot to be brought to a certain heat and then turned down to like a medium or a low to simmer, it takes a long time for it to drop. Uh, adds a lot of extra time to your recipe, and you got to remember that. Pull the pot off, let it cool. Uh, uh, I wish they had figured out a way to fix that, but maybe in time. Now, once these onions are done, we're going to stick them in this pot to, to uh, drain the excess fat off. And then, we're going to put the potatoes in the pot, the eight cups of potatoes, and hot water. I've got uh, four cups of hot water I'm going to put in there with it. Now, you don't have to use the hot water, but if you, if you go with cold water, it's going to take you a little bit longer to cook down. Uh, with the hot water, we estimate it takes about 10 minutes. You know, the hot pot and everything. It takes about 10 minutes for the potatoes to cook. Uh, not fully, but to cook in that first step. Uh, if you go with cold, you got to go to 15. You know, kind of. Okay, I got my onions cooked down. They look pretty good right now. Um, so I'm going to pull them off the stove, get them into this, this pot to drain. four cups of water so off screen I boiled this water I'm sure you guys have seen boiling water so one cup uh, that's two cups rather And four cups. And there's still some onion floating around in here, and that's okay. They don't mind. They can swim. Coffee. All right. So now we're going to throw our uh, potatoes in. We so lovingly cut these. In they go. I'm going to crank up the heat a little bit. See if I can make this happen. And it, it gives you the impression they're just about covered. But that's okay. You know, I might add a little bit more in there. I went a little over on the potatoes, so. Okay, so I want to cook about 10 minutes. So I'm going to put my timer on 10 minutes. And then uh, we'll see how that works. Um, in the meantime, I can get my corn ready, open the cans, and, you know, get things ready to go here. Alright, we got about a minute and a half left on this. Um, as soon as that buzzer goes off, I'm going to add the, uh, the bacon, the onion, and all the corn.
and get it in there. Then we got to cook it for another 10 minutes. So I'm going to start putting it in now. I got about another minute here. There's the kernel corn. I've had it out in the in the bowl for a little while, so it's kind of semi-thawed, so it won't cool down the pot too much. Now we're going to start with all the cream corn. I'm going to start with six cans. <clears throat> I saved that last can, the seventh, just in case. Sometimes, depending on how you cook it, how much uh, potato you put in, you don't need the seventh can. So I don't like to open it until the end, but the secret is I actually have a number eight in the cabinet, just in case. You want this to be more like a stew. There's our butter. Alright, now this is going to go another ten minutes, so... that heat back up a little bit. Um, you want this to be almost like a stew. That's how I look at it. Um, and if you can see that, it's it's really thick right now. And of course it doesn't have its traditional white color. You won't see that to the end when we put the cream and the milk in there. Uh, there's my bacon. You can see where the excess grease came out. Here's my onion. See if I can get this in here without losing it. Again, look at all that grease. You don't want to be eating that. Um, you want the flavor, but you don't want to get sick on it. So. All right. That's done. Dishes over there for the maid. Or when she's ever coming, but if she does, we'll be ready for her. Um, get that mixed up well. Check that heat there. All right, now while that's heating up, I'm gonna go through and you know, being a Yankee, you gotta clean these cans out good. You paid for that, you might as well get it. I get these cans of uh, sweet corn. I get these at all these. It's like 49 cents, you know. Um, so because you're adding so much flavor to it, to the chowder. Um, you basically just need an inexpensive uh, sweet corn. So there is sugar in here, uh, corn, water, sugar, modified cornstarch, and some salt. But uh, it tends to be sweet, and that's what that's what you're looking for. So there's no use buying a premium can for you know dollar ninety eight for putting that many cans in a pot, you know. Kind of defeats the purpose. You don't want to go broke making a pot of chowder. So. But that's being the Yankee, that's how we figure these things out. You know. Alright. Put those on. Stir that a little. Now we cook down for another 10 minutes. Or until the potatoes are fork tender. So, we'll see. So, in the meantime, I'm going to cut the camera off. I'm going to have some more coffee and then uh, we'll be back. So, we're, while, while we're waiting for the uh, chowder to boil, um, potatoes to cook, uh, let me talk, talk to you about the cream and the milk we're doing. Uh, 
dad would always take a moment to tell me about this and he'd have fond memories of growing up on the farm and and such and he kind of uh, wish they went back to glass bottles and stuff you know, like here we got the heavy cream this is what the cream would have come in um, back in his day uh, this was from Brookside Dairy in Northampton, Mass. Uh, long since out of business. And um, that that would have been basically what you got your cream at. This was a store bottle, you know, was sold right out of a right out of a market somewhere and not necessarily delivered to the to the house. You probably paid a deposit on the bottle and then brought it back. Uh, and then the whole milk, it comes in plastic now. Um, it came in glass when I was young, but uh, when he was young, it would come in bottles like this. This is called a cream top bottle. Uh, this is from Consumers Dairy in Westerly, Rhode Island. Um, I don't know if, I, I'm assuming that this was probably a, a home delivered, uh, but notice the bubble on the top. And what they would do is they would fill, the, you know, the whole milk would be, up to where my thumb is and this bubble up here would be where the cream separated so they'd fill it up to here and the cream would separate and float on the top and then the consumer would take a spoon like this it says uh, cream top on it and they would put it in there and scoop the cream out put it in there in their coffee probably I'm, I'm assuming uh, being New England, that's probably what they use it for. But uh, in any event, um, this was before uh, homogenized, you know, the homogenizing and the pasteurizing and such. So uh, it may have been pasteurized, but um, once they went to, you know, the full blown process the way they do it today, homogenizing it and stuff, the milk doesn't separate. So basically they separate it for you, they put the heavy cream in a container and sell it at a premium, and then they sell you the milk, you know, at a premium. So anyway, um, that's, that's what he used to talk about. Um, maybe someday we'll go back to that. We'll see. Okay, I've got my 10 minutes in. Um, <clears throat> this stuff is looking pretty good, I have to tell you. Uh, the strong smell of corn, bacon, onion, um, you can't smell that, but I certainly can. Um, I'm going to see how tender that is. Yeah, not too bad. It's got a little bit of a firm bite, but <clears throat> what's going to happen is this stuff is going to sit overnight in the fridge. Um, after I take it off the heat, you know, there'll still be some cooking going on, you know, as it cools down, and then you'll reheat it. So I don't want to make the potatoes like mush. You know, you don't want that. You want to have a, a decent potato that you can chew into. So it's a chowder, remember, it's not a gravy. So, so here we are. Now, I can remove it from the heat. I'm just going to shut the heat off in this case. Um, and we're going to add our milk and cream. So I'm taking the cream. This is a full pint of heavy cream here. Um, I pre-opened it. And I'm dumping that in there. Look at that. That is so thick. I'm going to have to shake it. This is what makes this stuff like magic. Look at that, it's not, I'm not even liquid here. I had to check the date on it to make sure it was still good. So, um, it was so thick. We'll get that in there. And then I'm gonna want a pint of whole milk. And for those of you people that failed math class they now have measuring cups that say pint on it so that's a full two cups 16 ounces 
should have done better than now. But you didn't. So here they are. I'm going to pour that in there. Stir that up. Now, it's, it's looking a little fluid for me here. And I'm not happy with this. Um, so, I added that extra water in the potatoes. I probably shouldn't have done that. Okay. Two more cans of corn going in. We might as well enjoy our time. Our time is short on this earth. Now the potatoes will absorb some of the fluid too, so see that's looking a little better. Um, now I'm going to salt and pepper to taste. Um, it's kind of hard to figure out how to do that. So I got some salt there. I'm going to throw in some pepper. I like to do it in my hand like that. And if I slip, I don't get like, you know, four tablespoons of pepper in there like that. Um, it takes a while for the salt to actually work. So you don't want to dump it in and taste it. And, uh, you know, that's, that's ridiculous. Um, it'll take a while. And so when we go to serve this, usually what we do is we put it in a bowl or a mug and uh, and we taste it and see how it how it is and then add salt to taste at that point so this just brings out a little bit of flavor um, all right now this is crucial um, if you're planning on eating this immediately you heat it to almost boiling but being careful not to scald the milk but if you're going to wait till the next day which is what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to pull it off the stove, let it cool, refrigerate it, and then reheat it tomorrow. But again, I don't want to boil it. Uh, sometimes, if there's just the two of us eating it, we'll just heat the bowl that we're going to eat. You know, just take it out of a container and heat the bowl. Um, if you find that the, uh, the taste is not as sweet or rich as you'd like, and some people do, um, you can substitute a second pint of heavy cream for the whole milk. And you can always add more uh, cream corn to make it thicker. So that's it. Let's take a look at what this... Uh, I'll just use this here to, to show you this. That's corn chowder. Dad would be proud. And I want to thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you make some. Uh, I really do. Uh, you're really going to enjoy this stuff.